All right, so this question says, a student throws a 120 gram snowball at 7.5 meters per second at the side of the schoolhouse where it hits and sticks. What is the magnitude of the average force on the wall if the duration of the collision is 0.16 seconds? Oops, sorry, it says 0.15 seconds, okay. So here we go, so let's make a list of everything that we know. So we know that the mass is 120 grams. And just a little note, I like to put it into SI units right away. That way it's just one less thing that I have to deal with or screw up later. So if we have grams, there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. So we're gonna move it over three places. So one, two, three, and we have 0 0.12 kilograms. Okay, next, so they tell us the velocity is equal to 7.5 meters per second. Time, of course, is equal to 0 0.15 seconds. And they tell us that we're looking for the average force. Okay, so now let's talk about some stuff that we're gonna use in here. Let's talk about momentum. So momentum, we're going to use the symbol P for that. Actually, let me change color real quick. So P is equal to the mass of an object times its velocity. So the um, average force, if we take that average force and we times it by the change in time, that gives us the change in the momentum. Now remember, the change of anything, or delta anything, is always equal to the final minus the initial. Okay, awesome. So now let's talk about the final momentum. So we just barely talked, of course, that the momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. So the mass, of course, of the snowball hasn't changed at all. It's still 0.12 kilograms, but the velocity at the end, it's hitting the wall and sticking, so it is zero. So if we take the mass, 0.12 times zero, that, of course, is zero, so P final equals nothing. So let's go ahead and get rid of the final velocity. Now let's divide both sides of the equation by T, those cancel divide by delta t. So now we have isolated what we're looking for. So the average force is equal to a negative initial momentum divided by the change in time. All right, so now let's scoot that down just a little bit. All right, so now we just have to plug everything in. So we have the average force is equal to negative 0.12 kilograms times the velocity, which we said was 7.5 meters per second. And then we're going to divide all of that by 0 0.15 seconds. All right, so now let's go ahead and plug and chug real quick. Let me grab my handy dandy calculator, negative 0.12 times 7.5. That gives me negative 0 0.9 kilograms times times meters per second and we're dividing that by 0 0.15 seconds divided by 0 0.15 so that gives me negative 6 newtons because how do we get the newtons? Let's talk about the units real quick. Because remember, we treat them just like any of the numbers. They cancel out or they multiply or whatever. So here we have kilograms, of course, times meters per second, divided by seconds. And that's the parts where I want to talk about it real quick. So we have meters over second divided by seconds. So if I treat this, of course, as one unit, and I change the bottom here, the seconds, into a fraction as well by putting it over one. Now we're dividing two fractions. And if you remember from math class, anytime we divide two fractions, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So now I have meters over seconds times one over seconds, which gives us meters per second squared. And if you remember the SI units for a Newton, 
we have a kilogram times a meters per second squared, which is exactly what we had up here, so we are good. Now, when you plug this into mastering, uh, mastering physics, we technically should put in a negative sign right here, right? We just talked about that. But what they're going to say is we don't have any sort of x, y coordinate system anywhere in the, that we're plugging into the question. So they're going to say don't worry about this negative and just give me the positive value of your answer. So 6 newtons is the answer.